Hello, it's Elizabeth here on the Danny Soap DIY channel. Thank you, gang, for joining me for another tutorial. This is for the boys' collaboration. Y'all know this is like my thing. I have been loving it. And this is the second rendition. This is the September for the boys' collaboration. And I have rounded up some of my friends to join me in on this. And they put together some great DIYs for the guys. This will suit about anybody, and please give them a good looking over. If you like what you see, give them a thumbs up, leave them comments, and by all means, subscribe to their channel. Now, if you don't see the playlist, the link's in the box down below. Click on it. It's going to bring up the auto playlist, and you'll be able to go right through there and see everybody's video. Now, what I put together for you guys is it may not think that it's a guy thing, but it really is. And the difference is, is I'm making, I'm kind of like bringing him into the fall season so that it matches the decor here in the house. And I'm showing you basic applique for beginners to pros. So everybody will be able to enjoy this. And if you find a template that you really like, you can print it off and do this applique. It's that simple. So if you can plug in an iron, you can definitely do this DIY. But you can take any pillowcase and I'm going to show you how to do it in this video. So, enough of me a tightening along. I love all you guys. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Leave comments because you know I'm looking forward to seeing what you think of this. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel and you're coming from one of this, on this crew, on this playlist, thank you so much for viewing my tutorial. And if you'd like to become part of the DIY gang, please hit the subscribe button. You'll be the first to be notified each and every time I put up a new video first before anybody else. So, without further ado, Michael's toss pillow for his back in his lounge chair. But I'm also going to add this little love pillow that I got from the Target Dollar Spot back during Valentine's. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to be doing basic applique. Now anyone can do applique. A lot of kids do this with their teacher in school. So this is for anyone who sews or doesn't sew. And it is a great DIY project. It's real simple, easy, and I'm going to show you how to make it in a breeze. So this is what we're going to need. We're going to use some freezer paper. This is the plastic coated freezer paper. And this is generally the size. It is the Reynolds brand. I don't know of any off brands. But it has this plastic coating. And it will help us to make our template for our applique. I've selected four fabrics that I got from Walmart back before fall. And they are out now and still available. So you can see the array of colors that I've selected. I'm going to do a pumpkin, and I'm actually going to use the Dollar Tree pumpkin and the Dollar Tree little truck with the pumpkins on it to make my template for my applique. This will be a three-dimensional applique that I'm going to show you how to do for the pumpkin. And then the truck, there will be some pieces that will be added to it, but it's real easy to do. So the next things that you'll need... You either need a Heat and Bond Light or the Heat and Bond Ultra. These are really easy to use. They have a backing on them and they're adhesive on both sides. Basically the way these work is once we iron them onto the fabric we're applying the applique to, voila, they're permanent. And it states permanent on the package. Now you can use the Heat and Bond Light. It works just as great. But if you only have the Ultra, you can use that too. The great thing is these heat and bonds, they come in a small package, so it's just the right amount to do little applique projects. And I just happen to have both because, well, I'm an advocate sewer and I do a lot of this. Who sew methods. Now those of us who sew will probably put stitching around our applique, so let me show you a past applique so you understand. This star is completely an applique. And you can see that it has very sharp edges. It's very clean. It's been applied. It stuck on there perfectly. That is because this heat and bond was sealed to the fabric prior to cutting, which is extremely important in applying fabric applique. I did put a stitch around it with my sewing machine, just a basic stitch. And that was just to give it more anchorability so that it, with him sitting on it and this having points, I really didn't want those to give way on one side and then the others be attached over a long period of time. And as you can see, it's done this side as well. Let's get to it. 
So I have my pumpkin in my truck laid out here. And I'm going to take that freezer paper and pull me off just enough to do my pattern. First one I'm going to show you to do is the pumpkin. Is I'll do the main pumpkin on top. Now remember, if you're wanting it to turn this away, you need to go ahead and flip it when you trace it. So because however you trace it onto this paper, that's going to be your pattern. If you want it going this way, you need to trace it that way. Our coating is on the bottom. We do my pumpkin with the stem going that way. Now you can make your stem a different color, but for the time being, I'm just going to get this drawn out and trace onto my paper. And then I can do parts and pieces later if I want to. The great thing about this is this will be my main pattern. So now I have my main pumpkin cut out. Now, if, like I said, if you're wanting a stem, you can very well go up here in the distance and create you a stem. And then for these other pieces that we have here, I'm gonna do just like they would tell you in school. I'm gonna lay it underneath my paper and I can real easily follow the dips. Now, if you do not have this pumpkin from Dollar Tree, you can go on Google or Pinterest and you can print out a free template. And I'm not worried about that line. I'm worried about the outer So now we have our pumpkins traced out and it's just a matter of cutting those out. I recommend using a pair of scissors that you would cut paper with. Don't use your fabric scissors. So the next one is our truck. Now the way I'm going to do the truck is I'm probably going to add some of these pumpkins to it in the photograph. So what I'll do is if you want your truck going this way, there again, trace it this way. But if you want that truck going that way, make sure you trace it going that way. That's all you have to remember. So whichever way you start, make sure that you're consistent with all your pieces. Now on this one, I'm basically going to trace him out. And you can do the other parts like the, tr the truck trailer here. Um, if you wanted to really get complicated. But for me, I'm just going to get the truck on there. I am going to do the tires on this simply for placement. That is a good idea whenever you're doing applique so you know where everything goes. Now it's time to begin the applique process. So we need our heat and bond ready for us. We've selected our fabrics to go with our pattern for our pieces. I've selected corduroy to be my stem. I am going to do my larger pumpkin with my orange plaid, and I'm gonna use the gray and orange plaid for my panels to make my pumpkin three-dimensional. You'll need to set your iron without the steam. So turn the steam off and get your iron ready and you want it on the high setting for your fabric. So the next process is, remember this is our freezer paper, but we need to put the heat and bond to the back of our fabric first. So as you can see here, I've gotten enough heat and bond out to suit my fabric. And look at this, a tiny little miracle occur. I have just enough width and length of fabric for one solid stretch. Another thing that you may want to have, and it's very important, is either parchment paper, wax paper, or if you are like me and you have a seamstress a lot, you may want to use your nonstick pressing sheet or rather our Teflon sheet. This Teflon sheet is worth its weight in gold. I have used it so much and I've never owned one until I began doing so much sewing. I figured it was a good investment. Now for those who are beginners, 
you'll notice that on heat and bond, you feel the coating, which is the glue, and then you have your paper side. So at this time, we're going to place our paper face down with the glue upwards towards us. So that's the shiny side. Next, place your fabric down on top of the shiny side. Once again, with the paper side down. If you ever forget how to put heat and bond to fabric, remember the instructions are on the package. Next, you'll place your Teflon sheet or your wax paper or your parchment paper on top of the fabric. This way, when we heat it with the iron, any adhesive that's not fastening to the fabric will attach itself to the wax paper or the parchment paper and not disturb anything else or get on the fabric other than the back side, which is what we are desiring at this time. Now we're just going to place our iron onto the wax paper that might be covering our fabric, allowing that heat to melt the glue to the back side of our fabric. And this only takes a touch of a moment. It does not take hardly any effort, just the weight of the iron. But as you can see, I'm kind of raising the iron up and placing it. You don't want to be ironing it, per se, shifting it back and forth because it could ultimately cause it to roll up or disturb how you've got it placed and centered on that heat and bond. So once you get the basic heat to it, it's going to attach pretty quickly. But just know that that glue is being melted and the package will tell you generally within 10 to 15 seconds. So it does not take a whole lot of effort to get your heat and bond attached to the back side of your fabric. Now one extra thing that I do is I will turn mine over, go over it ever so slightly. And that's just so I know that that glue has adhered to every inch, every centimeter of that fabric. Because one thing that I've learned over the years is if you are not putting a stay put stitch around your applique, Sometimes, if you cut it to the edge and you don't allow yourself a little extra, it will roll up. So to prevent that for beginners, make sure that you go over it ever so slightly. Don't hold the iron there, but keep it moving. So now it's time to iron our freezer paper to our fabric so we can cut our pieces out. And that is the great thing about using freezer paper, is once you get your pattern rough cut out, so to speak, or smooth, you can fit it and you'll place, you'll iron it directly onto that fabric and it will stay in place until you get it cut out. So we already have our heat and bond on the back and this just takes a moment. And as you can see, that's already there. It's not going anywhere. And just make sure you place everything where you want it. I do apologize for the shade guys because Everyone's had to go to bed. They have work tomorrow, and I have doing this by myself. I don't have any assistance, and you'll just run your iron on that, and voila, our patterns are now in place. So now you'll just cut these out, and we'll be ready to applique. So we've cut our pumpkin back out, and we have our panels. Now, I have not cut these apart, but I wanted to tell you before I cut these apart, Make sure that you leave your heat and bond paper intact until you're ready to iron this to your chosen fabric for your pillow cover. So I have not separated these, but bear in mind that you'll be able to use this pattern over and over again because we used the freezer paper. So this pumpkin, you can keep using it over and over again. Now the heat and bond paper, the glue is attached to the fabric, but until we're ready to iron this to our pillow cover, we want to leave that heat and bond paper on the back and keep it intact. You can remove this wax coated paper from off of your pumpkin, but make sure that you leave your heat and bond paper attached until you get everything placed onto the pill cover. It's beautiful. Since this is a layered applique, it's real important that we go ahead and separate these pieces. Okay guys, so I've got all of my pieces cut out and I do have my heat and bond paper still intact. And I'm laying it out to give it a look and just see what we've got. And you guys, I got two little small miracles I've got to share. 
I wanted to see the side of the truck in hole with the pumpkins on it. And guess what? My fabric is laid out just right to where I am getting a whole truck right here below the pumpkin. And here's the other little miracle. The stem of my pumpkin, look above it. It says pumpkin patch. Is that not darling? And then I have this little truck coming up to the pumpkin and this little truck pulling away from the pumpkin. So I've selected the correct pumpkin for my particular fabric. And that just worked out great. I am just loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. It is going to look fantabulous. So here's our next part. This is the piece that I cut to make into the pillow. This is going to be the front of the pillow. And I picked the corduroy as the coordinating back fabric of my pillowcase. So at this time, we're going to do our layers. We need to find the center of this panel. The way that I find my center is I take my piece of fabric, and I am trying to do this one-handed, guys. I fold it in half. Once I fold it in half, I fold it in half again because this one is a square piece of fabric. Once I fold that over, sometimes because of cotton fabric is just so good and divine, you can rub it to find the center and mark that way, or you can take your iron and just put you a little crease on there, and that will help you to find your center. Now, here's one thing to keep in mind, guys. This particular piece of fabric, as you can see, the trucks are flowing in a vertical fashion, but also coming across horizontally, so it's a full panel. But you would not want this upside down. You would want this right side up. And therefore, you can see right there where my center is of my fabric. And that's where I will place the pumpkin on the applique because we've already put our heat and bond to it. If you wanted to, you could kind of turn it and just kind of like that, kind of fold it but without denting it and place it where you know it would be creased right there at your line. And voila, you have your center and now you can iron that into place. Now that we've found our center, we can take the paper off of the back of it and iron our applique and attach it to our pillowcase fabric that we've selected. And usually it will just come right loose just like that. You don't want to yank on it. You just want to let it come off and then it'll come right off for you. Now on this particular applique, You'll do the pumpkin first, you'll do your stem, and then you'll iron your panels. Just make sure to take your time, don't get in a rush, and everything will place just perfect. Alright guys, the pumpkin's looking pretty good, and she is ironed on. Now you have two options. If you are a sewer, then you would put an applique or blanket stitch or decorative stitch around these three-dimensional panels to make it pop more. And, of course, one on the outer skirts so that it would just ensure that your applique stays there for a long, long time. I would also recommend doing some cording with a zigzag stitch to make you a little curly cue. Or maybe put the word fall or hey y'all fall or something of that nature. Additionally, um, there are so many ways to Sunday you can do this. You guys know you could put fall through the center here. And then, of course, set in a zipper and place your your pillow inside the pumpkin pillowcase. Now, for those who are non-sewers, this is an option for you. You can take the three-dimensional paints that are at Dollar Tree, and you could put the three-dimensional paint around this. Allow it to sit overnight and dry, and it will serve the same purpose as having put a blanket stitch or some kind of stitching around this and it will stay forever the sides will not rise up or roll up or anything and remember this is permanent it's washable just like it is so with or without stitches or cording this pumpkin is going to stay on this panel forever and if you did try to detach it from it you'd probably destroy it as well as rip the fabric so at this point, it's time to make our pumpkin into a pillow. We can... 
tree for the no sows those who do not sow that want to do the applique you can actually take the 3d paint from dollar tree and go around all of these pieces let it dry overnight and it will completely cover any edges and it will not come undone and it will be permanently adhered it will last for years we are at the end of the applique once you iron everything into place onto your pillow panel then it's just a matter of making the pillow cover placing your pillow inside i am interrupting you at the mid last of this video because i wanted to say thank you to everyone on this crew for this for the boys collaboration I hope you go by and check each and every one of them's video out. Give them a thumbs up, leave them comments, and if you like what they're doing, make sure you subscribe to their channel. I love all of you guys. Thank you so much for having a fantastic collaboration with me and for bringing our viewers an opportunity to see things that are for guys. Now, with that being said, I am showing you the truck. And the difference in the truck versus the pumpkin, the applique is identical. The truck has more parts, but I made one significant change, and I just didn't feel like you would want to watch that entire video for the very same thing that we did on the pumpkin. The change I made was when I laid out my truck, and I had all my parts and pieces, I realized that I had made my tires the same color as my background. To make it different, I decided to put shadowing under here by adding a piece. That way it looks like the truck is sitting parked and you're seeing the reflection. I did do a medium zigzag stitch around my applique pieces. And that was great. It made it really, really pop. And I pray that if you'll stay tuned for the B-roll, I have videoed and tried to depict how beautiful both of these pillows turned out. I made Michael a smaller one for more comfort because he stated that his larger one that I made the pumpkin with tends to aggravate him sometimes and is a little bit too much. So the shorter one should give him more comfort. And I know he's going to absolutely love these. On this particular pumpkin pillow, I added corduroy for the stem to coordinate with the backings on these pillows. As busy as this fabric is, I wanted to use each and every piece of fabric, and it really pulled together and just really turned out awesome. And as you can see, even with these plaids against this really busy background, it just pops. And they are absolutely stunningly beautiful. I am sure that the video and the pictures do not depict how gorgeous they are. Now, I mentioned two products in the filming of this video, and I'd like to go over those. For those of you who are beginners, who do not sew or do not wish to sew, for those of you who do sew, but maybe you, the sewing machine's broke down, maybe you don't want to drag it out, Heat and Bond. This is the 3 8 tape. It works identical to the Heat and Bond we used for the applique. I have used this to make curtains. I've done Roman shades. I've hemmed bridges, skirts, and I've even made purses with it. I have used it extensively, and it's stronger than stitch witchery, but with the same purpose in mind. The difference is this is really truly designed to join seams or fabrics together on a permanent basis for a long period of time in place of sewing. So basically, you would put your right sides together, place the tape in between, set your iron based on your fabric and the settings and follow the instructions on the package. Iron it and then voila, your two fabrics will be fused together. Repurpose or recycle an old pillow or if you have a pillow form that you would like to use or maybe some old ones out of date that you wouldn't mind sealing up all the way around. That way they're completely washable and dryable. The second product I named was the three-dimensional fabric paints that sell at Dollar Tree. I've used these extensively. I will leave a link to the video where I did the word believe on a flower sack towel to duplicate the one that I loved from the Target Dollar Spot. That link will be in the description box if you'd like to check that video out. So let me brag a little bit more. These 3D dimensional fabric paints, they 
are awesome and you can use them in place of doing stitches. So rather than doing the applique stitch, use the dimensional paint, go all the way around it, let it dry overnight, and then it becomes completely washable and dryable. And it is awesome. Additionally, I mentioned you might want to add a word or two. So let's say you wanted to add happy fall, y'all, or maybe put fall down it. You could very easily just write these just like you were using a marker or an ink pen. And they are beautiful. I have used them a lot. I've got many colors. So what I will do is it is an affiliate link. It costs you nothing, but Amazon will give me a little tiny commission if you happen to buy your products online. Use the link in the description box. It will take you to dimensional paints that I usually use, which are artful. And the second one is the heat and bond tape. Just in case Walmart has not gotten it back in the stock or you're not able to go to your fabric craft store. And that will make it easier to shop online. I'd like to say a special thank you to the entire crew of this collaboration for the boys September 2020. My viewers, and if you're coming from their channel, thank you so much for taking the time to view my video. Until the next DIY, this is Elizabeth over and out. Bye, guys.